I'm Stephen Cassidy. Um, and uh, very pleased to introduce Marco Perez Um, who's been working on this next generation um, converged digital infrastructure project uh, as part of the Institute for Manufacturing, part of uh, Cambridge Engineering. <clears throat> it's recently moved to the um, University of West of England in Bristol, uh, having been awarded a, a lectureship there. So congratulations. Uh, Mark has been working on how we control complexity in an infrastructure. In other words, how much can of the operation can be delegated to greater automation of the infrastructure itself? And this is really needed because we need to respond faster and faster to a, a bigger spread of custom services over um, so different flavors of, of network. So pulling all this together uh, means that it's, it's so much to manage that we need to get as much computer help basically as possible. Uh, so that's what Mark is going to talk about, um, agent controls. And I know that, um, uh, what would, um, that you'll have questions, um, which we'll answer at the end. Do put them in the chat as we go. Marco also has questions for you, and you'll see how that will work. Uh, and I have one or two questions as we go to Marco. Uh, so I hope that will will stimulate some uh, some uh, interaction. Um, we'll pick up on those uh, your points at the end. So thanks very much, Marco. Over to you. Thank you very much, Stephen. And it's a great pleasure to me as well to be here. And thanks everybody for, for connecting today. Um, so I have organized the, the talk in as follows. So initially I want to talk about uh, agents in industrial context and how do we think that agents could enable us to um, deliver the vision that we have of digital infrastructure. Uh, then I'm going to talk about the challenge that we face when we are trying to, to use agents to, to actually um, implement one of those functions that we uh, intend the digital infrastructure of the future to have. And finally, I'm going to give some key takeaways of this of this session. So, so uh, now, when we talk about agents in this particular presentation, I'm going to really talk about uh, artificial agents, okay? Because maybe people who are more familiar with from the social science, maybe agents in in, in some other agent agent based models, they could also refer to humans and so on. But in the, in this context, it is mostly artificial agents which essentially are pieces of software programs that are deployed, that are installed. It could, they could be installed in a um, computing infrastructure in a virtual environment, like we have in the bottom, this example of a, of a video game, or they could be installed in mechanical objects like robots or drones that we have in the top left and right. So the idea of the agents is that they have different uh, properties. They, they show some level of autonomy, uh, they are able to make decisions, of course, and they are able to react to the, to the environment. They also are able to interact with other agents in order to complete a given task. For example, in the left um, top of the screen, what we are seeing is how some uh, robots or agents in a, a warehouse are able to pick items and put them closer to the operate, operators so they don't have to walk around all the, the warehouse and, and lifting all those weights. Uh, and the right hand side on the top on the top, what we see is drones that uh, help um, to spread fertilizer across multiple um, areas of, of a given farm. And in the bottom, what we have is a, a particular application of multiple agents, teams of agents trying to, in some cases, to cooperate to achieve one goal, which in this case is um, capturing a flag, whereas other teams of agents are trying to cooperate to avoid those agents to capture the flag. So at the end, we see here two, um, two types of behavior. So collaborative behavior, and we also have competitive behavior. Um, so when we think about digital infrastructure, and the idea is that we are thinking about infrastructure that it's uh, facing huge demands of, of uh, bandwidth, in, time response, of quality of service, and many of their characteristics and the ideas that this infrastructure they are required to react or to respond very quickly to these demands and to adapt uh, according to the to the demands and the change in those demands so the um, um, the use of software virtualization and and the uh, network function virtualization 
actually has enabled or has us to um, display or to show lots of potentials of the things that we can do with the networks and how quickly the networks can can adapt and can change given those those demands. Uh, and the vision is of course to try to um, go towards a network or an infrastructure that is able to cope with these changes, um, with these uh, ongoing new requirements uh, by itself and try to, to, to show some levels of automation for some of the tasks that are required, for example, configuration or protection of, uh, of, of given parts of the network. For example, when a failure happens, how do we avoid that failure to spread across the entire network, but we try to isolate the, the part of the network that is uh, affected and many other uh, activities. So at the end, the idea is that the network is able to determine when these kind of actions are required and trigger them um, in a way that it is considering as well the goals, the overall goals or the service that we are delivering to our customers and trying to minimize impact on those on those services. Um, so in this case, in this moment is when I, I would like to ask you, given the, the example that we have seen in terms of, of agents, so what do you think would be the kind of task that agents will do in an automatic autonomic infrastructure. So try to think, for example, if uh, we are not in the context of a warehouse, but instead the agents are deployed across the infrastructure, what kind of things would be uh, interesting for them to do in order to guarantee that the um, network is going to work as expected and the services are going to be delivered as, as customer expects. So just uh, type in, if you go to this address, menti.com, and type in that, that code, uh, you should be allowed to type in some, some keywords. The, the, the first keyword that comes to, to, to your mind, you don't need to uh, overthink, it's just a, an exercise. And also you can, you have the link in the, in the chat, if you prefer to, to um, go to the link and just type in any question that you may, um, that may come to your mind. So I will give you a, a few uh, seconds to do that, and then I'll, I'll, I'll move on. Okay, so some people is talking about uh, truthworthy. So actually, that's a, a, a interesting one because, see, yeah, so um, one of the as we are going to see one of the key challenges of uh, the agent-based model and the multi-agent systems is to try to um, demonstrate that they are uh, truthful, that actually human operators or humans can delegate tasks uh, to them. So that's quite important. And, and reliability as well. Some people is mentioning reliability. This is also important and agents definitely can deliver on that because at the end, since they have this capacity, this, this ability to react to adjust according to the environment. So if there is any failure, then the agents are able to um, decide which uh, which actions should we take in order to mitigate the effect of that failure or to um, to ad address or to trigger a solution for that. Um, so efficient utilization is something else that, uh, that the uh, person is, is uh, somebody is, um, mentioning so uh, uh, that's true because at the end with the agents we are able also to distribute as we have seen in the examples of the um, warehouse and, and the drones um, we have um, we are able to perform multiple tasks in parallel so we don't if we just have for example one person looking after a farm so it will take us long longer to to try to uh, to complete the job but if we have multiple uh, resources available, we are able to deploy multiple tasks and to perform efficiently um, different tasks at the same time. Uh, so yes, yeah, so that's all um, related to, to the time, the time, sorry, because at the end the time is something, it's a, it's a valuable resource that we have and we are trying to, uh, uh, to, to, to use them, we use it effectively. Uh, okay, so what else do we have? So predictions, so somebody's talking about predictions, so yes, so exactly, so the agents, uh, we would like them to be able to predict, for example, when the network is going to, to fail or how the network is going to behave in some point. And uh, we are also expecting 
some people are talking about coordination, coordinated. So yes, yeah, so we are expecting that they coordinate and they enable us to uh, trigger the multiple tasks. But of course, in a, in a way that it makes sense from the from a global perspective. So they need to have some kind of coordination between them. So I will move on. So thank you very much for, for participating. I will move on to the next uh, slide. So you have mentioned some of these, these tasks and uh, from a, let's say, very general perspective, the idea of the work that I'm going to show you today, is they are mostly based on the context of maintenance operation and, <clears throat> and uh, control of the network. So how the, that interplay between maintenance and, and control of the network in order to um, actually uh, deal or address failures that may happen in the network because the different network elements or equipment of the network, the network may fail in some point. So all the what the idea is that we will have agents that are deployed across the network and they are going to plan when the maintenance should be able to uh, should run, and uh, they also they are going to um, manage the the maintenance when it should take place. So they are going to manage the operation of the network, so the customers or the the, um, the service uh, that is being provided to the customer is affected in just the minimum uh, because of this maintenance tax. But eventually, so we also see a future in which we can have perhaps robots that are deployed. So some of the actions that we can trigger with the agents are robots that are sent to remote location to, to repair or to um, inspect some of the equipment that we have deployed, like, like this robot here in, in, in a pipe, or also even coordinate. Some, some of you mentioned the coordination as an important uh, aspect or activity that the agents should consider. Coordination not only um, uh, pure age, pure uh, robots or mechanical objects, but also uh, human uh, teams as well that they can work in coordination to fix or to repair a given failure. Uh, so just to summarize, so the idea is that the agents they are able they, they enable us to provide some flexibility to the infrastructure, so we can address multiple heterogeneous requirements of the of the customers. They are able they enable us to also to adapt to those changing requirements. So if, for example, the in infrastructure needs to grow, we have seen that this kind of software uh, network functions enable us to actually grow very quickly and also enable us to, um, to shrink or to scale down as the, as the customer needs change. So we also want the control infrastructure or the control system to, uh, to behave in the same way and to adapt as well as quickly as the infrastructure is changing. So the agents will allow us to uh, to do that, to deliver those, um, um, those those behaviors as well. And also some, some of you mentioned about um, distribution. So this is quite important because at the end we are able to take advantage of the um, computing infrastructure that is, uh, is available across the different geography uh, in order to also linking with the next advantage to decompose a problem uh, in multiple pieces. So sometimes when we think about, for example, trying to learn or trying to train um, models in order to understand and to try to predict what's going to happen in the future, uh, normally we use a lot of data uh, of these models uh, or collected across the, the infrastructure in order to train this model. But sometimes maybe that uh, those amounts, those petabytes of data, uh, they are not required. Maybe we can just look at local um, in local pieces of the infrastructure or local regions of the infrastructure and work with a very limited um, data set, which may be enough to the, to the task that we are trying to, to do. So it's not always necessary to go and to try to consolidate huge amounts of data. We can also uh, break down problems and try to uh, work uh, in a distributed way. That also leads us to the, um, provide different levels of autonomy. So the agents enable us to define scopes and define an, a number of actions or activities where the agents can interact or can act uh, by their own and other actions that the agents will need. For example, the um, supervision of uh, human operators or they will need the um, uh, yes, they, they will need a workflow in which humans are, are involved in, in any stage before they can do anything. So they, are, they just um, suggest actions, but they are actually not allowed to uh, trigger any of those actions. So 
but how actually agents enable us to, to deliver this, uh, uh, this this advantage. So we are going to focus mainly in two elements. So the first one is through modeling abstractions and behaviors. So essentially the agent itself, we can think that is a kind of an abstraction uh, that we can use in order to model the dynamics of the systems that we are uh, with, that we are working with. In this case, the, the infrastructure, the changes uh, that the infrastructure faces, the uh, increases of demand, the services that the um, that the customers demand, and so on. So all those dynamics uh, we can model, and then we can use the, the abstraction of the agent to uh, replicate those dynamics in some control environments. And at the same time, we can use uh, those models to learn and to try to test different learning strategies. So assuming that we don't have for sure a model of the of how the dynamics work, we can try to predict and we can try to use those artificial environments to learn and to determine which uh, um, strategies or which models are, are, are the best suited. So here, agents help us uh, to abstract uh, those complex problems and try to make models out of them. Um, another aspect in, in which uh, agents can help us is in to try to actually implement those pieces of software that uh, we just mentioned at the very beginning. So those those programs that are running, for example, in the robots or that are running in different parts of the infrastructure. So um, it has been, uh, agents has been, uh, let's say, in the research arena and in, in, the, in, in the industry for, for many years, can say more than 40 years now. Uh, and there have been attempts to use, for example, platforms that actually provide those environments where agents are embedded and they provide a number of services, for example, location services, so agents can locate other agents that are registered in that, uh, in that platform, in that environment. So it kind of works like a kind of directory um, and also they enable, they provide multiple uh, life cycle um, activities, like for example, starting a new agent, replicating agents, and so on. So we can say that most of the um, developments in terms of a multi-agent system have been around or using agent platforms. So that triggers a question, Marco, which is that uh, uh, in telecoms arena, the agents have sort of waxed and wanes in fashion. Um, because of the very thing that you mentioned earlier about uh, the complexity and the breakdown and the, the compute power that's available. So I'm just uh, interested to know um, how, you know, what issues arise when we try and get this to carry a scale because a network is a massive, a massive yeah. en engine. Definitely. So that's a, that's a, a, um, an interesting point because at the end, that's one of the things with these platforms, since they are providing a, a control environment, at the end, they are also constraining the agents that are living within that environment. And at the end, all the agent solutions, uh, they are somehow limited by the power of the agent platform that they are uh, embedded in. So, and that has been one of the of the key challenges in, or the key issue maybe that has um, somehow slowed down the adoption of, um, of the agent technologies in some context with the scale uh, uh, to, to grow quickly and 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 and, and, the, and the scale is, is a is a is a requirement it's a key requirement so so definitely uh, there, there are a number of challenges that we need to address in order to make this vision that we have of agents enable those autonomic capabilities of the infrastructures so one is definitely the uh, a truly distribution of intelligence because yes yeah, so we have seen that more than 40 years, we have models about agents, how they can distribute the load, how, how they can co cooperate, how can they co collaborate. But some of these models, they are uh, working only in, in theory. Some of these models, they are working in this very constrained environment. So how we actually try to uh, deploy these agents across a uh, computing infrastructure and try to make them work uh, and, and cooperate as uh, these theoretical models um, define. So that's something that's a challenge that we, we we aim we try to contribute to. Another aspect is that when we are trying to uh, break down the problem uh, in multiple pieces or multiple agents in this case, um, there is a, a new challenge that appears and 
and so somebody mentioned that in the in the question is how we are going to coordinate because when we are breaking down maybe some of the agents they are doing the same task or maybe they are um, they, they, they are doing tasks that may be conflicting with each other in some point so how we are going to coordinate are actually uh, um, try to achieve an overall goal try to achieve a general view of the of the system so that's also a complexity that comes with uh, adding uh, agents into the system and finally of course uh, when we look at um, trying to understand the complexities of for example this infra this big infrastructure with multiple perspectives appear so in this case we are trying to consider not only the perspective of the pure telecommunication aspects like the throughput uh, or the, the flow, the nodes, the links that are uh, um, defined that, that are uh, in which the network is configured or the, the nodes and so on. But also we are also trying to consider the dynamics of the deterioration of the different uh, equipment or network elements that are part of the network. So this kind of complexities uh, are also a, a kind of a barrier in, in people to to trust in these models and to delegate activities because they are not able to fully um, understand how the agents are making decisions and they are not able to actually um, um, test or validate the actions that the agents are taking beforehand uh, and, and, and then have the confidence that in production they are not going to uh, make a mistake that could cause uh, serious, serious, uh, or have serious impact. So those those are key challenges that we we are somehow trying to contribute towards. Uh, we are trying to address. And I'm going to start with the first one, which is essentially uh, trying to address that uh, distribution of intelligence ac across the available computing infrastructure. So when we look at how the agents have been built in the past years. So there is a common approach. I, I mentioned that we have this um, platform, agent platform that provides this service. Normally, this platform is conceived as a um, individual application that can be deployed or installed in multiple instances of, of the network. But at the end, this individual application contains all the business logic in terms, for example, of services um, or of the data. As I mentioned the, this uh, directory. With other, when uh, where other agents register and so they are visible to other agents that they want to collaborate with. Uh, but uh, this kind of uh, infra uh, platforms is architected in a way, is designed in a, in a way that all the servers are coupled, are heavily coupled. And then uh, you, you want to distribute uh, an agent solution, then you need to install that architecture as many times and as, as nodes or our machines that you want to, to distribute the, um, uh, the solution. So, and also uh, you are constrained to the services that the platform is, offer, is offering. So if there is something that you want to do at the platform is, is not offering that, so you may need to uh, develop, develop an interface with some external uh, software of system, but so, um, but at the end, the, the services that the platforms usually offer are, are limited. So our approach here is to try to incorporate some of the um, most, uh, let's say, uh, successful, let's say, or use um, architecture styles in distributed systems, which incorporate the use of microservices. Essentially, microservices, what they do is they try to, um, to wrap or, uh, a specific task in a in a particular piece of software in a particular uh, software unit which is called a, a microservice so that microservice at the end they have interfaces and with these interfaces we are able to um, uh, to link to use other, other other microservices that are available within that within the environment but the key point here is that as opposite to the platforms every microservice they can be running in a, for example a different uh, programming language they can be running in a different uh, infrastructure. Some we can have in the cloud, some we can have installed in the equipment itself. And as you can see, uh, different elements of the of the application in this case of the system are are decoupled. For example, the user interface is decoupled from the specific logic, but we just communicate through uh, well-defined interfaces. So that's more or less the principle that we are trying to use when building this uh, let's say model 
uh, agent-based control systems. So in, a, so in that way, the expectation is that we are able to deploy those agents uh, easily across the infrastructure because they have this, uh, this architecture and because they have well-defined interface, interfaces. Um, so the other uh, aspect or the other piece of, uh, of, of technology that enable us to actually deliver those agents is, um, is virtualization, essentially, which is the same virtualization that we use when we talk about network function virtualization. So it's, it's essentially um, the same concept, but instead of uh, virtualizing the functions that the network elements or the equipment can uh, provide, here we are trying to virtualize the control functions that the agents can provide. And we have multiple approaches for, for virtualization. So some of them, uh, they are, uh, you may be familiar with them. So some of them incorporate more uh, functions for, for, from an underlying uh, operating system. Uh, and some of them, they are lighter in terms that they are trying to, um, they are trying to take advantage of a host operating system and they are trying to reduce uh, the amount of code of libraries that are required to run. So at the end, what container-based virtualization does is to provide an in isolated environment that we can just install in different uh, uh, parts of the infrastructure and we can install very, very quickly. So it's just uh, a matter of uh, um, generating an image that contains of the dependencies that a given uh, software requires. And then we can, in the same way that we install that, for example, in the cloud, we can install that in a robot or we can install that in a piece of equipment that we have in the in the network. So, so that's the that's the idea underlying the this virtualization. So it allows us to abstract all the specific um, characteristics of the environment or the hardware where the software is uh, is operating. Um, so let's continue. So based on on that uh, on those and those approaches. What we are trying to do is we are defining an um, agent-based architecture, which is based on containerized agents. And essentially, those agents are the, are the ones that we have here in the middle, the control agent boilerplates. So the idea is that they define the key functions or the key tasks that an agent in our infrastructure or in a given industrial system should perform according to some of the uh, of the properties of the element of the infrastructure that they are controlling. So if we talk about uh, an, a specific asset, so you may think in, a, in an asset in, a, in the infrastructure is like a piece of equipment or a network element. So that could be a, an asset. And then uh, all the actions that we would like to do related to that asset are embedded or are contained in this digital asset agent. Also, we can have a representation of the space where this equipment is deployed. It could be, if we are talking about a base station, um, it has some characteristics. Maybe we are talking that some of the uh, assets that we are dealing with are antennas. They are deployed in a given uh, outdoor environment. But uh, also, we, are, we can talk about the spaces that are control rooms where these pieces of equipment are organized and, and linked huge data centers uh, with more control options. So we have agents that are controlling that spaces that are representing those spaces. And of course, we have other agents that are more uh, based on the function that the, that the system, the control system is, deliver, is delivering. For example, we can talk about service managers that are um, looking after specific services that are running in our um, control environment. In our case, services, they could be uh, data packet transport services running across the network, and they should have some given characteristics of the quality that we need to, to uh, monitor. And so the idea of this service manager is that it should be able to monitor those characteristics and be able to, for example, predict or um, understand how these characteristics may affect the, um, also how these characteristics should be guaranteed in the future if the network is affected by a, a given situation, failure, or any other unexpected uh, situation. So we have the service manager and we have process manager that they can deal again 
uh, in the same way with um, different specific processes ac across the infrastructure and another type of um, uh, agents that we can define. But at the end, these agents, they provide the boilerplate that we can uh, use to define multiple copies or clones of agents specific to the particular services or the particular uh, equipment that we are controlling. And part of these uh, agents is, of course, um, a number of uh, routines or algorithms that enable us to uh, make the decisions, to sense according to the abilities of the specific uh, equipment or the specific device where the agent is deployed. So the sensing capabilities of a robot that we have seen at the beginning are different for the sensing capabilities of a drone or a sensing capabilities of an agent uh, running in a, um, uh, in a virtual uh, environment. Um, and, and the last part, the last bit that the agents have is also a way to, um, to cooperate or coordinate with the other agents around and also of course, providing interfaces for um, for operators, for human operators to send commands or to monitor what the agents are doing. And this is basically what we have in the interaction model. So we, we can have also a number of, of topologies on interaction models and protocols uh, that the agents should respond to, should respect in order to communicate across the infrastructure. So that's basically the uh, the, the model that we are trying to to, to implement. Uh, second question for me, Marco. Um, so the functional picture here, functional architecture. Um, something about the dynamic side, the stability and reaction time, and how to maintain that in a good place um, in the face of failures in the network or real traffic surges or the dynamics of actually operating a network. How do we ensure it always performs in a reliable way in terms of reaction mm -hmm. time? Yes, exactly. So the the good thing of having this uh, this kind of model is that we are not constrained to just these functions, but we actually can uh, implement another set of um, of supporting functions that can allow the agents or meta functions that will we look not at the level of the system that is being controlled in this case the infrastructure, but we look at how the control system is behaving. Uh, while controlling that infrastructure. So in this case, for example, you mentioned things about the uh, the dynamics of the of the system. So the idea is that we have uh, also agents that can be deployed in order to control the dynamics to predict what what are the changes, for example, that the infrastructure is experiencing if uh, there is an increase in demand. Or if it is a, is a decrease in, in, in if a decrease is an increase in demand in some areas, some regions, but a decrease in others. So how we can reallocate resources quickly from one side to the other. So that's something that we can um, we can support trying uh, or develop, deploying other agents that are looking at a meta level, not at the infrastructure itself, but at how the system is controlling and how effective the system is 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 doing in terms of controlling that that infrastructure. And that's what we have here in this, uh, in the left hand side, the supporting function that uh, enable the adaptation of the control system and its evolution. Okay, what, what, what kind of mathematical tools or system tools do you have to, to actually reason about properties like stability, like convergence uh, in systems like that? Because in, in, in our communication networks, when we do things like routing or rate control, these are nice, Distributed process. Sorry, my mic was in the right place. Maybe I should start again. What what tools do you have to to reason about things like stability and convergence in uh, systems like this? Uh, in all the canonical examples we have in our networks are things like routing and rate control. Uh, yeah. We talk about we we have control theory. We've got uh, optimization theory. These kind of are the kind of tools that we can use to talk about stability about. Uh, convergence times of these of these kind of systems. So, what what kind of frameworks, mental frameworks, do you use to to support reasoning about the stability of your multi-agent systems? So yes, yeah, so exactly. I mean, in terms of the the frameworks. So in this case, so I, I appreciate the question, and maybe uh, for future questions, maybe I, I would prefer maybe to to address them at the very end of the presentation. But just to pick on that one. Um, 
so so yes yeah, so in this case we are talking about not uh, changes in in those tools so what we are talking is trying to integrate those tools into the agent platform so the kind of tool that you are mentioning optimis for example numerical optimization or um, even uh, data driven models like uh, or like for example neural networks that kind of things of that kind of tools that's those are the same tools that we can use here in this kind of, of agent so for example uh, I, I'm going to show later uh, some other uh, cases in which uh, this is more about the, the engineering of those systems, but I will show later other cases that hopefully will address how these agents and how these kind of environments are actually uh, dealing with the data that they are collecting and they are trying to make those decisions, which I understand is the is, is, is the point of the question. How, so how this, um, these frameworks that are already out there are also used in the in the, in the provision of these multi-agent systems. So so just to uh, wrap up this 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 part. So at the end, this uh, loosely coupled infrastructure enable us as well uh, to or this loosely, sorry loosely coupled architecture enable us to uh, address uh, to adopt multiple uh, topologies or multiple interaction models uh, and multiple responsibilities. So the agents, they can be embedded with a specific uh, task, specific activities, but depending on the characteristics of the network, the infrastructure, we can just adjust the topologies and we can pass, for example, with a more hierarchical uh, structure in which we have a, a, a global supervisor of the, of the control actions of the agents to pass to a more hierarchical, uh, in, 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 let's say, topology in which we have a peer-to-peer -peer communication and they are cooperative uh, supervisor of the task uh, in the, that the agents are, are carrying out. So this is basically some of the things that, uh, let's say, the, the conceptual framework that we have uh, developed. But the idea, of course, is to try to implement this uh, in, in reality, trying to use the tools that uh, are used in terms of uh, in network infrastructure at the moment. And for that reason, so we try to develop uh, an initial use case or initial demonstrator uh, based on on the on the context of uh, network maintenance, as I as I told you at the very beginning. So the idea is that uh, we are going to deploy multiple of these agents, uh, these digital asset agents that they are going to represent the the equipment and the network elements of our infrastructure, and also. Uh, we have agents that are going to represent, for example, the, the spaces where the agents are, are deployed and the, um, and also agents that we are going to look after the services that we are providing across the network in terms of, for example, um, measuring and monitoring and the end-to-end -end delivery of a, services, of a service and trying to, um, to ensure that the throughput or that the qualities, uh, the properties that, that we use to measure the quality of that service are guaranteed across the uh, across the infrastructure, regardless of the maintenance operations that we need to to do. Uh, so for doing so, uh, essentially what we try to do is just um, have this um, demonstrator in which we connect with some of the most popular SDN controllers that is being used in the in industry widely, which is ONOS. Uh, well, it's, it's used ONOS as it is, or maybe just extensions of ONOS uh, by some commercial companies. But the idea is that we have the agents that uh, they are um, reading, they are collecting the information about the topology, the traffic of the network, or the intents that are running in the, in the network. And at the same time, uh, they are collecting information about the physical uh, condition of the equipment. So in this case, um, what we did was to simulate the, phys the physical condition and, and we simulate some deterioration, uh, uh, unusual deterioration of some of the equipment. So we were able to see actually what's the, uh, the response, the reaction to those um, uh, of, the, of the agents to, the, to that situation and how we are able to reroute the traffic, which is actually controlling, changing the configuration of the network through the SDN controller in order to avoid uh, disruptions or to, uh, to limit the impact 
on the services that are running in the network in a given time. So while the agents are trying to do this, they are receiving commands from a chatbot, uh, from a, a chat interface. They are receiving commands from the users, and also they are providing that they are pushing notifications to the user via the chat and also via a dashboard. So let me just quickly show you um, a video uh, where we can see part of that. So what we have in the bottom is the um, terminal where we are triggering the, the agents. So in this moment, we are connecting to the ONOS SDN controller that we, we have here, uh, this interface with the different um, nodes in the network. And we have one node on one agent per each of these nodes. So the, the green lines represent the traffic flowing through the network. And what we are going to see is that in some point, um, in this particular, um, in one of the switches, we are going to see that is, as, as we can see here in the, in the dashboard, is uh, it has a, is not well. So its useful life is uh, very low. So we are going to trigger the some maintenance uh, actions on that uh, on that node on that equipment. So the idea is that the agents will find a new way to reroute the traffic out of that equipment to minimize the disruption in the service. And what we are going to see uh, now is that uh, if you look at the at the node in the middle, the tier one from uh, top to, to bottom is going to, the, flow, the traffic is going to be taken out from that node to the next, uh, to the one that is just below that one. Uh, so this way, the agents they are predicting that the, age, that, the, that the device is going to fail and they are triggering the maintenance action that are required to reduce the impact of that um, of that of that situation. And at the same time, they are uh, notifying notifying the users and and updating the different dashboards. So that's uh, just a very simple case uh, where we can demonstrate how this architecture uh, works. But uh, ideally, uh, of course, we will also like to to show. Uh, the, the, um, the capabilities of this architecture wor uh, working at higher scales or, or larger scales. So we run multiple experiments. So I'm going to show here in the right uh, what is the cost advantage. We can think in the cost advantage as the savings uh, of the of the agents that the agents are producing compared to having an infrastructure in which uh, agents are deployed statically uh, and for the entire uh, for the entire system. So if we have an infrastructure in which agents can be deployed uh, in isolation and they can be activated on demand across different points in the infrastructure. So we have uh, here some cost advantage or some savings that we can use in terms of the use of resources that these agents are going to, to do or are going to use because, um, because at the end they are not deployed statically or in, 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 let's say, they are not stable across the, the system. So this is basically uh, some of the activities that we did. And then coming back also with the with the question of what kind of tools of model. So we also try to apply it basically uh, some of the uh, of the frameworks for uh, distributed learning, with essentially for, for multi-agent uh, reinforcement learning, in which we are trying to predict what we are trying to use this um, uh, this framework to actually uh, compute or come out with the best strategy to when to maintain the different uh, elements of the network. And so basically in this kind of frameworks, we have agents that are sensing from the environment and they have a, a given model of how the, agent, how the assets or the equipment is deteriorating across the time. And there are some actions that these uh, agents are able to trigger. So we model that uh, individually for, a, for every agent and all, for every asset and all the components that they have. And also we were able to um, make a model based on a stochastic uh, game. So that could be one of the tools that we use, a stochastic game, um, trying to represent the dynamics uh, of the interactions of the different agents uh, taking actions uh, jointly are trying to maximize 
the reward, the overall reward of the of the network. So in this case, our reward is is related to the uh, availability of the network. So what we are trying to maximize is the availability of the network. And also, uh, we are trying that that reward function is also trying to reduce the cost of the uh, of the maintenance operation, assuming that the cost uh, that we get some advantage in terms of cost when we perform maintenance of two joint uh, components. So, for example, components like cards that are in the same uh, device, uh, the maintenance of those two will be uh, um, uh, cheaper that if we perform the maintenance operation in two separate uh, assets or equipment that are far from each other. So we uh, we use that uh, that approach, uh, and essentially we manage to uh, to learn the uh, the agents manage to learn a, a, a policy that uh, maximizes uh, that reward. In, in this case, well, it's a, since the reward at the end is the resources that we are using and, and how much is it costing. So we are aiming here for the minimum value of the reward, and we have you, we, we benchmark with different models available in, in the in, in the research community. And uh, but at the end, the, the, the point is that we have uh, managed we managed to distribute that learning process and um, without having too much knowledge about the concrete uh, state of other agents or other devices or their equipment within the network the agents are able to make decisions that consider the overall environment of the overall network so that's uh, that's basically what we have here and i think uh, i'm running out of time so i'm going to try to to summarize that the that the last part of the of, of the work that we did is trying to um, compare multiple um, alternatives multiple strategies that the agents can take uh, in order to um, trigger or to plan the maintenance operation for a, for a given network. And in this case, we also use some numerical optimization um, uh, approaches uh, uh, based on, on, on um, linear programming and uh, in order to try to identify what are the resources that uh, the agents have to maximize, for example, the costs of the maintenance operation or minimize the cost of the maintenance operations uh, while at the same time try to uh, maximize again the, the availability but uh, trying to compare different strategies or when we do we actually perform the maintenance if we wait until the equipment to fail or if we um, trigger the maintenance a number of uh, steps or a number of uh, time steps before the, the equipment fail on, on when exactly uh, can we trigger that that maintenance. So I think that's more or less the, the idea of the work that we have done and as key takeaways. So the idea is that uh, agents can help us to model these complex situations um, and try to understand better and to uh, actually play or simulate scenarios and make sure that the agents are going to uh, behave uh, properly in, in the in, in production uh, and uh, when we deploy them. The other aspect that we addressed was the um, how the agents can be deployed using containers across the infrastructure so we can actually distribute intelligence. But still, the, the, the also the key point here as well is that still there are many things to, to address in terms of conflict resolution, agents that are goal-oriented and, and different physical interfaces. Uh, for the agent, for example, when deploying them in specific uh, um, devices like robots or, or drones and so on. So thank you very much, and, and hopefully at least we have a, a few minutes to to address any further question. I hope I have addressed the question related to the kind of tools. If not, just feel free to to tell me. Thank you to all the collaborators because of course this all this work I, I didn't do it alone. So many thanks for to to all the the collaborators across the NGCDI project.